Hey guys, Nathan Duck River Honey. I've gotten a ton of questions about my syrup feeding system, my pump system. So I'm going to cover that in detail today. I'll say that I've got uh, 105, 110 hives right now. I'm planning to go to 200, 250 next year. And this system would be stressed at 250. Uh, at that point, I think I'd rather be in an IBC tote or something bigger, something on a trailer. But for just going to yard to yard, I can make this system work really well. And I'm gonna talk about some modifications that I will plan to make to it over the winter that will make things a little easier. So let's get started. So I've got a food grade drum. I picked that up for 10 bucks. The only thing that I've done to it is put a hole in the lid and I put a air vent for a metal air vent for a gas can in there. And you can see uh, this came with a cap that seals it off and I took that cap off and threw it away. And there's a good reason for that. This is the first drum that I started with. And if you forget to take the cap off that air vent, the pump will crush the drum. So on the second one that I put together, I threw the cap away. You can see I get a little bit of spillage in there, but this hole is small enough that honeybees cannot get in there, though I do get a few yellow jackets that will crawl through and then drown in the syrup. So I keep a strainer right here beside the tank. When I'm mixing syrup, if I have any debris in the tank, I just strain it out. I use a battery powered kayak trolling motor to mix the syrup, that is a Hosswing W20. They're about $100, $115 on Amazon. I'll try to leave a link to that. I've not had any problems with this one, though it does get dried sugar uh, in this propeller and it'll stick, but I just free that up before I, I use it every time. And I've not had any longevity issues out of it. I've been using it a year or two now. I think two, maybe just a year. I'm not for sure. But I look at this as a disposable item and, and something that I can upgrade to a dedicated uh, syrup mixing system. So in the bottom of the tank, I mounted a through wall bulkhead fitting. It's polymer. I got that at McMaster Car and I got a long enough neck on it that I made a basket out of eighth inch hardware cloth and put that over the outlet uh, with some zip ties. If I do get bees or debris in here, anything heavy sinks to the bottom and the pump won't pick it up. And anything that floats can't go through that mesh. So it keeps my pump clean. You can see the outlet of that bulkhead fitting is threaded three quarter MPT. So I went to the hardware store, got a three quarter MPT ball valve, and then a fitting that changed that over to garden hose thread. And I cut a piece of garden hose and that takes it into my pump. All right, so this is all sort of one unit, but I'm gonna talk about it in the way the syrup flows. So syrup's coming from the tank. It comes through the feed hose, the inlet hose. And I've got a Flowjet diaphragm pump. This is a Flowjet 04300504A. Uh, it cost me about $207 at Amazon. And I just mounted this onto my hose reel. Now, one of the weaknesses of these pumps, I've got several, they don't like debris at all. You need to keep it clean. Uh, they've also got plastic inlet and outlet fittings with quick attaches. And I thought that those would fail over time. So I actually um, put some inlet and outlet uh, pieces of garden hose on there and that allows me to hard line it or to uh, put quick attaches if I wanted to. I could do that. So I've got a 20 amp uh, fuse on this thing and I just use some extension cord 
to wire in leads to the battery. I've got a, I bought a battery for this. I also run my sawmill with it and it's an extra for my truck. It's uh, actually the size for my truck that made sense to me. And it has a handle on it, which is handy. So syrup comes into the pump, comes through the pump, comes into the inlet for the hose reel. This hose reel is actually the most expensive part of the system. That is an Ely, uh, E-L-E-Y garden hose reel. It's all aluminum, high quality for a garden hose reel. It's $321. And I'd say that that is probably, it's the best garden hose reel that I found on the market, but it is not as good as an industrial hose reel. The uh, the fittings in this thing are only five eighths of an inch and the hose I'm running is three quarter. So I would rather have three quarter or even one inch fittings in that reel, but it fits in my truck and it was three or four or $500 cheaper than an industrial model. So that's why I went with that. The hose that I've got is real rubber hose. It, the brand is Continental. And I picked that up from Rich Tool Systems online. I think I got a 75 footer and this one is $119. Well worth it. That hose is awesome. Um, they're hard to find, but um, Rich Tool Systems has got them. They've got a 100 foot, a 75 and a 50. I've actually got a 50 footer in the honey house to clean equipment with. And then I just put a, a fuel nozzle on the end of this thing. So overall, I've been pretty happy with this system. I think the pump is probably the weak point in the chain. This is the second pump I've had. Uh, the first one just isn't reliable. Sometimes it primes and it does okay, and sometimes it won't prime. And um, I ended up buying another one because I thought, well, two is one. And the second one I've had no issues out of at all, ever, ever. So I think this one, I think I got a bad unit on the first one that I bought. They're 200 bucks. You can find them cheaper online, but you have to pay shipping. So I just got them on Amazon um, because shipping was included. Um, they do make a little bigger one than this. I think this is a four and a half gallon per minute. They make a five gallon per minute. And I wouldn't mind doing that because you know, time is money. You're, if it takes five seconds less to fill up a feeder, uh, uh, when you repeat that a hundred times a day, that adds up. It, it really does. So, um, if I have to get another one, I'll probably bump up to the, the five gallon per minute or yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's a five gallon per minute. The other way that I can improve this system, uh, I can detach all this stuff and hook it up to an IBC tote on a trailer. And that might be what I do next year. Might just get a 275 gallon tote and hook this stuff up to the tote. If I'm doing heavy feeding, like spring, trying to grow nukes or something, if I make a hundred nukes and all of them have to be fed, well, that's two tanks worth. The other thing that I can do is to take another tank and get a trash pump from Harbor Freight and wire plumb up a system where it sucks syrup or sugar and water out of the bottom and then circulates it through PVC back in and then circulates it through and it'll mix syrup for you. So if I did that, um, well, I'll give you this example. I've timed it. It takes me 20 minutes from the time I pull into my honey house until I'm leaving here with a new tank of syrup, right? That's filling the tank, uh, putting the sugar in, mixing it, add a little bleach in with the, the syrup when I do that. And it takes me 20 minutes to make a, a tank. With this other system, I could foresee a, a way that I could take a stock tank automatic watering float and mount that into the, the drum and just leave the hose on so I keep a certain water level in the drum and then all I would have to do is come in, add the sugar and turn the pump on and um, and it would be ready to go. I would have mixed syrup ready to go when I rolled in and then I just have to pump it into 
uh, this tank. So I think it could be a little quicker where it would be making syrup while I was out in the field. So I think I, I could make some improvements to this, uh, maybe even make a IBC tote system where I'm making syrup, but I don't want to hold too much at a time if I'm not going to use it. Uh, I do think there are some improvements I can make to my, my mixing system over time. I could add another tank in the back of the truck and run two off of this, and that would work okay, but I've got a half-ton truck, payload 1,600 pounds. This drum full of syrup is going to weigh 500. Um, you know, it gets heavy for this small truck. <laughs> if I'd step up to a full-ton someday, that'd be no issue. So bigger truck is in the in the cards long term but boy they're a lot of money right now trucks are very expensive right now guys i'll leave links to all this stuff in the video description uh, if i can put an amazon affiliate link in there i will and if you click on that it'll give me a very small amount of money uh, take it out of amazon's pocket and put it in mine so i appreciate that if you can do it well, guys, I hope this is helpful. If you've got any questions on it, feel free to ask in the comments. I try to answer all of those that I, I get. You can also send an email to info at duckriverhoney.com. Be happy to talk to you about it. Again, I think this is good for the sideliner. You know, somebody that's going to max out at 100, 150, maybe 200 colonies. And uh, it is versatile, and it doesn't take up that much room. Like, I can use the rest of my bed for equipment and everything is on this one side and it's in line so i like that it doesn't it doesn't take up that much room and i can keep it in here all the time um you know go pick my kids up use my truck for personal use as well and it's not too obtrusive so i, I think it i think it's a good system for what it is you know for for what this does i think it works really well